As one of my first instructors once said, it doesn't matter how many certifications you have, it doesn't matter how advanced a senior engineer you are, you will never, you will never be above running cable. I'm Eli the Computer Guy and today's class is Network Cabling. Today we're going to go over how to create patch cables, how to punch down cables into uh, patch panels and into ports. We're going to talk about toning cables so that we can, we can figure out what cable is what and a whole bunch of other things that, that go with, uh, with cabling. No matter what you do in the, the computer world, you never get away from cabling. And, uh, as my instructor said, it doesn't matter what level engineer you become, you're always going to have to run cable at some point. I mean, it's just, it's just easier. Uh, cabling is very easy to do. I basically taught myself how to do cabling in, I don't know, 12 hours. I sat down with a buddy of mine's uh, books and test sets and figured out how to do cabling. And then I was literally the next day at a client site running cable and everything worked okay. So, so don't be afraid, don't be concerned. Cabling is exceedingly easy. And it's just like everything else in computers. If you do things properly, then it's easy and it works fine. If you go off on your own little tangent, then everything goes to hell real quick. So this class is network cabling and uh, let's get into it. So, uh, obviously, if we're doing cabling, the first thing that we need to talk about is, is the cable itself. Uh, the cable we are going to be using for, for cabling, for, for running to different ports, for creating patch panels, etc. Generally, when you buy cable in bulk, you'll get it in a box like this. Uh, it normally either comes in 500 foot or 1,000 foot lengths. Uh, when I bought this at Home Depot, I think a 500 foot box of cable was about $50 and a 1,000 foot box of cable was uh, somewhere around uh, $90, I think it was. Um, you can buy shorter little bundles of cable, but realistically, if you're in the computer business, uh, at the very least, just buy a, a 500 foot box of cable. Um, you'll be happier for it because one thing is if you do have to, to run a length of cable, there's nothing worse than doing a really, really, really long run and then right before you get to the end of your run, you, you run out of cable because then you have to run the entire, uh, entire run again. Uh, when we talk about the cable, uh, there are generally three types of cable we talk about when we talk about uh, network cable. Uh, there's something called CAT3 cable or Category 3 cable. There is CAT5 cable, Category 5 cable, or CAT6 cable, Category 6 cable. Basically, CAT3 cable was the original cable used for networking. And its maximum speed is approximately 10 megabits per second. You can still buy CAT3 cable uh, when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot. I would suggest that you never do for anything. Even if you're running telephone wire, still don't buy CAT3 cable. It's old, it's obsolete, and I mean, it's barely good enough to, to run your telephones off of. The next type of cable is CAT5 cable. This is the standard of the industry. Whenever uh, you hear about networking cables, most people will say CAT5 cable. So if they say networking cable, they may say CAT5 cable. Network and CAT5 is usually synonymous. CAT5 has been around, oh, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, a long, long time. I've, I've been using CAT5 cable the entire time I've been doing computers. Uh, its speeds will now go up to a gigabit per second, so it's good enough for any, almost any network you're going to be running off of for the next 10 years. Um, so most people use CAT5 cable. Uh, this is the cable that you normally use. You will also hear it uh, termed CAT5E. This uh, CAT5E is a little bit better standard than CAT5. So I think most, uh, yeah, most most CAT5 cable is CAT5E. Don't, don't get that confused, just CAT5 cable. Uh, the next uh, level up is something called CAT6 cable. CAT6 cable, uh, the main benefit with it is it's good enough. You can actually do up to 10 gigabit per second uh, transfer rate over it for short distances. I don't know anybody that has any networking equipment good enough <laughs> for 10 gigabit per second connections. Um, 
if you go to the store and they all, all they have is Cat 6, they don't have Cat 5, you can buy Cat 6. Uh, it's just as good for running network cable as Cat 5. It's just a little more expensive because, of course, it's better. Uh, if you want to save a few bucks, just buy Cat 5. So you can use Cat 6. For today's networking equipment, it, it doesn't really matter. One of the options you're going to see when you go to the store is uh, you'll see the normal normal box of cable, and then you'll see a box of cable that will say plenum, P-L-E-N-U-M, I think is how you spell it. And that plenum cable is going to be five times more expensive than normal uh, networking cable. The reason is, is plenum cable is used uh, for running cable inside of uh, ventilation ducts or in ceilings that act as ventilation. So the reason is, is the casing around uh, normal uh, Cat5 or Cat3 cable is very, very nasty stuff. If this stuff starts burning, it creates a horrible, toxic fume that will do really bad things to you. So the government, in its wisdom, does not want you putting this into ventilation uh, units because if there is a fire, all that nasty gas is going to get spread around the building. It's really horrible. So plenum uh, doesn't have the same problems. You can run plenum cable through heating and cooling ducts and through ceilings that act as heating and cooling conduits. That's why it's so much more expensive. There's, there's something in the case that's either not toxic or it doesn't burn, but the only reason you need plenum is if you are actually going to put uh, the wire into, into the ventilation pipes, into ventilation, then you need, need plenum and then you need to spend you know $250 for a box of plenum cable. If you are not going to be uh, running the cable through ventilation ducts, you do not need plenum and therefore you need the $50. The last, uh, the last thing we need to talk about with the cable is you will hear the cable term to as twisted pair. Um, if you open up the cable, you have four pairs of twisted cable. I don't know if you can see that. That's kind of, there we go. So one, two, three, four. And you see the pairs and they're, they're twisted together. So these two come apart, see like that, these are twisted. The twists in this cabling act as shielding to prevent interference, outside interference from getting on uh, to the cable and disrupting the, the network traffic that is going on. So these pair are purposely twisted around each other and this creates a shielding, again, to prevent prevent interference coming in from the outside world. Why this is important for you is whenever you go to, to terminate your cable into a jack uh, or into a plug, you always want to keep the twists as close to that plug or to that jack as possible because that, that those twists act as the shield. Um, so if you have a long distance where you have undone the twists, that, that, can, that can mess with, the, with the, the cable. So if you have like a long distance like this, now interference can actually get on to, to this cable, to this wiring. Um, I'll, I'll show you more about this when, when we're actually punching these into to plugs, into jacks. So the, the main part of this section is there's three types of cabling you'll see when you go to your local, your local Lowe's or Best Buy. It's Cat3, Cat5E, or Cat6 cabling. Cat 3, you can still buy, but don't. <laughs> it's obsolete. Been obsolete for 10 years, so please don't buy it for anything. Cat 5E uh, is a networking um, wire that supports up to gigabit per, gigabit per second connection speeds. So this is most likely what you're going to buy when, you, when you're creating your own patch cables or wiring your building. Cat 6 is, of course, better than Cat 5E because it can run up to 10 gigabits per second. You pay more for that, and realistically, um, there's not a whole lot of networking equipment out there that can even do 10 gigabits per second. So right at this point in time, I wouldn't bother with it. Again, you will see that you have an option for plenum cabling. Plenum is a lot more expensive than normal cabling, and the reason is, is because you can run it inside heating and cooling ducts or inside uh, or in ceilings that act as, as ventilation areas. 
if you're going to run cable in those areas, definitely do buy it. You have to buy it, and if you don't buy it, it's a bad thing. Um, but if you're not running wire in those areas, then, then don't buy it because it's really expensive. And the only, the only benefit of plenum cabling is that it doesn't turn into a toxic brew uh, when, when a fire happens. So we've talked about the, the cables, uh, now we need to talk about the jacks. We need to talk about what you're, you're going to be putting your cable into. All you have to remember is that network cabling, uh, Ethernet cabling, uses an RJ45 jack or plug. So when you go into your Lowe's or Best Buy or go to Newegg.com or whatever else and you're buying a plug or you're buying a jack, uh, by RJ45, RJ45, that is what is used for networking equipment. You will also see RJ11, RJ11 is used for telephones, so the, the small plugs, um, the small plugs and the small ports, those are RJ11, and that is used for telephones. The, the large, the large plugs and the large ports are RJ45, and this is what is used uh, for networking. Um, you, you, can't, you can't swap them. So all, all that needs to be said about the jacks, it is RJ45. When you, when you go to Lowe's, you go to Best Buy, buy RJ45, and you'll be good to go. Now comes for the exciting part that all, all the geeks like a lot. Now's the time to buy more tools. I think in one of my previous classes, I said, don't, don't buy any tools until you need them. Well, if you're going into cabling, you need tools for cabling. So, uh, so now we get into some of the cool little tools you get to buy. The first thing that I'll, the first warning or advice that I'll give you is when you go out to buy your tools, buy good quality tools. Good quality tools will be more expensive than cheap quality tools but you need good tools. Uh, if you go out there and you buy the, the Chinese knockoff crap, you're gonna make your life miserable. You really are. Um, I'm gonna show you my crimpers. My crimpers cost about $45 uh, to, to crimp down um, and create patch cables. You can buy crimpers for $10, and then you're going to hate life every time you create a patch cable because Again, with all the, you know, whenever you deal with business or buying products, there really is a reason that the $45 crimpers cost $45 and the $10 crimpers cost $10. So when you go out to buy your tools, buy good, high quality tools for network cabling. Um, you know, between you and me, cabling is a ridiculous profit margin. I mean, just, just to, to, to run cables, I mean, it normally comes to about $150 per run. So, you know, spending two or three hundred bucks to make sure you have the, the best cabling equipment isn't that expensive. So, uh, so buy the good stuff. Now, the first tool that you're going to need is very low tech, but again, you need to buy a quality set. And that is a pair of good electrician scissors. Good electrician scissors. Not, not the, the play school things. Uh, if you go to Lowe's or Best Buy, uh, these cost about... Um, $15, I guess. You're like, oh, $15 for scissors. These are amazing. They're razor sharp. They, they cut through cabling amazingly. This stuff, I mean, if I want to length a cable, I can just cut it that easily. It cuts through coax cable without a problem, without getting dull. I can sit here and, you know, cut through a, a hundred lengths of coax cable and it will still be sharp. So, uh, so the first thing that you need to get is a, is a good set of electrician scissors. The next thing you need is what I was talking about before, a set of crimpers. Uh, it'll look something vaguely like this. These are weird mechanical things. What these do is when you have the, the plug, and we'll, we'll show this when I'm, when I'm creating patch cables, basically you put the, the, the network cable wires into the plug, you put all of that into here, and you crimp it down. And when you crimp it, that crimps the plug into the cables. Um, there's a whole mechanism in here that makes this very easy to, 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 to crimp uh, cables together. 
And because of that mechanism, you're not going to tire out your hand and you're not going to hate life. Again, if you buy the $10 version of these, uh, there's not that mechanism that makes it easy to crimp, so you'll be using all of your strength to crimp those cables, which won't be bad once or twice or three or four times, but when you're doing a real networking job and you're crimping down 50 connectors uh, in a day, I mean, you get sore. So, uh, so, so, so buy, these are, these are crimpers. If you go to Lowe's or uh, Home Depot, like I say, they'll run you about somewhere between $40 to $50. Um, the next thing is what is called the punch down tool. This tool is used to punch down your network cable into uh, the plug, into, into, into this port. So the, the cables go in and you, you, you push this down and it, it, it secures your, your cable into your port properly. When you buy this, uh, these punch down tools always come with a minimum of one blade. So the, the front of this, the top of this, is a blade that can be taken off. If you're lucky uh, and you're good, when you buy it, you will get both a 110 blade and a, what's called a 66 blade. 66 blades are used for telephone systems. 110 blades are used for telephone systems and more importantly, networking. So when you go to buy your punch down tool, you need to make sure it comes with a 110 blade. If you buy your punch down tool and it comes with a, just a 66 blade, well, then you, you still can't punch you down anything with networking. You have to have that, that 110 blade in order to, to punch you down uh, networking uh, wires. And if you go to buy this, I like this one from, from Ideal. Ideal actually makes a lot of good net, uh, network test equipment and tools. Um, again, this is a 40 or $50 dollar you know, tool, and you're going to think, oh, well, why am I going to spend 40 or $50 for this tool? One of the nice parts is this has an automatic, it's a spring cutting mechanism. So when I push this down, as I'll show you later, uh, onto, onto the plug to, to terminate the cable, it will actually, there's like a hammering mechanism that will hammer the, the wire into place and then cut off the extra bits. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you spend a few extra dollars. This doesn't sound like a lot, but like I say, if you're doing doing a lot of network cabling, this makes a big difference. Uh, again, you can buy you can buy punch you down tools for as little as five dollars, but they don't do the automatic cutting. Uh, they're not nice and soft and easy to use, and you don't want them. So so buy an ideal or buy buy one of the nice punch down tools. Again, it'll cost you forty fifty dollars, but but it's well worth it. When you do buy it, get the one ten blade at the minimum. Um, you can buy additional blades once you've bought the punch down tool. They cost about $15 a piece. So whatever you do, you have to get a 110 blade. The next thing that you're going to need is a cable tester. Uh, these come in many shapes and styles. They mostly look like this though. Uh, your, your cable tester is going to cost you again anywhere between $40 to $100. This is what you use to test your patch cables uh, to make sure that everything is connected properly. So you create your patch cable, you plug one side into one side, the other side into the other side, and this tells you if you have done it properly. Have you, have you messed up uh, where the cables are? Is there a break in the line, etc. So you need one of these cable testing devices. The last tool that you need uh, is a toning device. This, this device here, what you do is you plug this unit uh, into the network cable uh, that you're dealing with. And then with this, with this little wand, you can trace that cable throughout your building. So let's say you, you go to a client's site and all their cabling is already run. They've already had 50 cables, and all those 50 cables all go down to the, the patch panel. But then none of the cables are marked properly, or maybe a few are marked improperly. Well, what you can do is if you're trying to figure out what cable, what, you know, this, this jack, where does this jack go to on that patch panel in the basement, you can plug this device into the jack 
and then go down to the patch panel and use this toning device to figure out you know where where the cable is. Uh, again, we'll we'll show this to you later. This is a very very useful tool for cabling. Uh, these uh, can be a bit ridiculous in price uh, for what they are. Uh, normally, I think they cost anywhere between about sixty to, to eighty dollars. But again, an invaluable tool, especially if you <laughs> forget to to mark your cabling properly. You use this tool to to, to figure out where all your cables are going to. These are, these are the basic tools that, that you need for cabling. Again, uh, when you go out to buy them, make sure you buy high quality tools. If you buy the low quality cheap stuff, you're gonna be miserable. Uh, if you're the person sitting at home and you're only ever gonna make a few patch cables or punch down a couple of jacks, okay, fine, buy the cheap stuff, whatever. If you're a professional, if you're actually gonna go out and, and punch down any number of cables, if you buy the, the, the garbage, you're going to hate yourself by the end of the day. The day you really will. So, so those are the different tools. Make sure you buy quality ones when you go out and buy them. Okay, so now we get to the fun stuff. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to create a patch cable. How, how to create a cable to connect your computer into the wall or into the switch or the switch into the patch panel, etc. The first thing we're going to do is uh, show you how to create the patch uh, cable. Okay, so what are we going to need here? We are going to need some RJ45 jacks in order to create the patch cable. So we'll grab, uh, grab two of these. We are going to need our fancy dancy crimpers. We're going to need scissors. We're going to need our cable tester. And of course, we're going to need cable. So uh, let me grab the scissors. And since I'm just showing you uh, how to create a patch cable, let me just create a really short one. See, look at this, it just cuts right through it, no problem. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to get to the little cables that, that are inside here. So in order to do that, we use our scissors and we very gently cut the sheath around the cables that are inside. We then pull, oops, oh, that was, let's see. Now you wanna be very careful because these are sharp scissors and if you, you cut down too hard, you press too hard, you'll cut the little, the little wires that are inside of here and then you'll, you'll ruin uh, your cable. So here are, the, the different pairs. Now to make it easy, we untwist these twisted pair cables. Like so. So now we have something to work with. Now these Little little wires have to go into a very specific order when you put them into the jack. So that order, and we'll put this in the class notes, is you do white orange, orange, white green, blue, white blue, green, white brown, brown. So you get all those in the right order, and then you kind of you kind of grab them and you shake them back and forth so you, so you get them flat. See, because remember we're gonna have to shove all these little wires into into the bottom of this little jack. So we get them to about how we like them. So we've got orange, white, orange, uh, green, white, blue, blue, white, green. Uh, brown, white, brown. So that's the order that this is supposed to be in. We then use the cutting tool oops, on the crimpers right here to cut these wires to make sure that they're, they're completely even across. If I tried to cut the wires using the scissors, um, I may go diagonal or one wire might be longer than the other, might be a problem. All these little wires need to be the exact same length. So we cut those. Like that. 
So now they're all the exact same length. Then I grab this jack and I push them into the jack. Now I've been doing this a while, so that seemed very easy. Simply trying to push these wires into the jack can be a really pain in the butt. Uh, it takes time and experience, but once you know how to do it, it's easy. Now notice there's no exposed wires here. Uh, the, this sheath goes all the way into the jack and then the wires are in there. You don't want these wires hanging all the way out down here. Uh, if you see that, that's bad cabling. So now that, now that the wires are in the jack, we just take this crimping tool and then all we do is we push the jack in and then we crimp down. And then we just really tight. You want to make sure this is tight because you don't want any of these wires to, to come loose later. Now once you've crimped it, you pull the cable out and see now this is nice and tight on. This is now, this is now one piece. Um, it would be very difficult to, to, to pull the, this plug off this cable. So we did, we did one side. Let's do the other side. So again, you know, this is the sheath. We use our nice electrical scissors to cut around the outside of the sheath and then we pull the sheath off. When we use the electrical scissors, we are very, very careful because if you press in too tight, you'll cut one of these little wires in here and if you cut one of those little wires, well then <laughs> you just ruined your cable. Um, now after we've removed the sheath, we then untwist these twisted pair cables. Now the twisting, remember, that is used to shield the cables from outside interference. So we untwist them. Now we pull them so that they're straight, so we can actually deal with them. Because um, I pull on them a lot to, to lengthen them and straighten them out because a lot of times they're still curved and you know they're still in that, that twisted pattern and that can be a real pain to use. Okay, so now we do orange white. Where's orange white? So we do orange white, orange, white, green. Now it can't be a mess in here. Let's, once you get all these cables, make sure they get in the right area. Blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. Let's see. Try to straighten these out a little bit. Ugh, I might do that. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green. Now, one of the reasons I'm showing you how, how long this can actually take is because it can take this long. So if you're doing this and it feels like it's really being a pain in the butt, don't worry because it really can be a pain in the butt. Oops. So white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. This is, this is the order that the wires are in. Now we put them in to a little crimper cutter. And remember we use this crimper cutter because it will make sure um, all the wires are cut uniformly. Whereas if you try to use the scissors, eh, they probably wouldn't be cut that uniformly. Cut it off. 
You then take the jack, you put the jack on. Now you push the cable all the way in. Oops, god damn it. All right, I saved it, no big deal. So you push this cable all the way in so that it's tight up in this jack. Um, and then you use the crimper. And then you crimp this tight, tight together. Now we have a, uh, a patch cable. So we can use this to to connect a computer into the wall or connect a switch to a router, etc. The last thing that we need to do is actually test this cable to make sure we did it properly. Because although you take all this time and all this energy to do this, you, you may have done something, something wrong. So you plug one end of the cable into your testing device. Then you plug the other end of your cable into your testing device. And then you press whatever the test button is. As you can see, uh, this passed. So however your testing device says it, as long as the cable passes, then you're good to go. If this, if this says that the cable failed, um, well, then, then you just have to redo it again. So that's how you create a patch cable. So uh, we've just created our first patch cable. Uh, that's that's pretty easy to do. You just cut off the length of cable, however long you need. Uh, you cut off the sheath on one side, make sure that all the wires are in order, cut them off properly, put the little jack on, put the jack into the crimper, crimp it, and put it on the other side. Uh, when you do the other, after you've done the other side, you then put this into a little testing uh, device, a little wire tester, and make sure that your cable passes. Always, 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 always test your cables. Um, you know, I've been doing this a long time now. I've been doing this, I don't know, eight years creating cables. You can make really small mistakes that, that will make the, the cable not work properly. So if you get cocky and you go, oh, I know how to do this, and you start creating, I don't know, five or six or ten cables and you don't test them, you may be sad to find out um, a large number of those cables are bad. So whenever you do the cables, always test them. It takes five seconds to test the cable. It, you'll, you'll be happier that you did. Now, the pattern of the little wires that I showed you, orange, white, orange, uh, white, green, blue, uh, white, blue, brown, white, brown. Whenever you're doing cabling, and we'll, I'll show this to you uh, when, you're, when you're punching down into the jack uh, in, the, in the next segment, you're going to have the option between the A pattern and the B pattern. Um, so when you do cables or when you punch down cables into jacks, you have the option, I don't know if you can see on here, uh, but for, for, uh, for A and for B. <laughs> this is the ridiculousness of, of the IT world. A or B doesn't really matter. Uh, the pattern doesn't make anything better and it doesn't make anything worse. But you have to use the same pattern on all things. So you don't want to punch down to create a cable on one side that's A and the other side that's B. That won't work properly. In the United States, we have defaulted to using the B pattern. So whenever you go to, uh, to create a patch cable or to punch down into a plug, you always go with, with the B pattern for how those cables are, are laid out. Like I say, it's not any better or any worse than A. It's simply, this is what everybody in the US does. And so you always wanna to try to stay on the same standard. So like I say, um, the layout of the cables, it will be in the class notes uh, that, that go with this class, um, so you don't have to remember them. But just remember that there, there are two different patterns that you can use whenever you punch down a cable. You can either use A or B. In the United States, we use the B standard, so just, just use B. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to punch down a cable in, into, into a jack, into a, into a port. So with this, all we need is the port. Uh, again, our handy dandy electrical scissors. 
our punch down tool with the 110 blade and of course cable. <laughs> so I'll bring you over here and I'll show you how this is done. Okay, so here's the cable. We're gonna act like this cable is coming out of the wall. So somebody ran this cable from one place in the building to the other place in the building. So we take the end of the cable and just like before, we use our handy dandy electrical scissors and we cut off the end of the sheath. Just pull it off. Again, we've got all these twisted pair cables in here and to make life easy, we just untwist all of them. And then we straighten them out so we know what we're looking at. So now we have the plug, we have the jack. Again, if you look at the bottom of this, this will tell you where to punch down the wires at, and they give you for B and they give you for A. So if you're doing the B, you put blue, green, brown, and white brown. If you're doing A, you do blue, orange, brown, and white brown. Again, technically, uh, there's, there's no difference between B and A, but everybody in the US always uses B. So whenever you're punching down into a jack or into a patch panel, always use B. If you use A in the United States, unless you're told to, uh, you're gonna cause people problems. So all you do is you take the wires that you need. So blue, and white blue go into the first uh, sections here. So, and remember, we want to keep the cable as the twists as close to where they get punched down as possible. So, we plug that in there, and we plug that in there. And then we do. I say these doing cabling properly can be a pain in the butt. So then we do white green here. And then we do white orange here. And you just you just push these down snug enough so that the wires will stay. That uh, we're gonna use a punch down tool in a second. And then orange. And then on this side, so we got blue, then we got green, and then we have brown, and then we have white brown. Again, there's no memorization in this. Uh, I simply follow uh, what I'm told you do, and I use B. Now, all these wires are nice in here. Um, and you basically, like I said, you just use your thumb to press them in hard enough that, that they're not going to go anywhere. Now, this is where you use your punch down tool. So, you take your plug, you take the punch down tool, and you put it on a hard surface. Make sure it's a hard surface. Not your knee, not your buddy's knee. Hard surface. Because, remember how I said this is a punch down tool that's got a little hammering action? When I punch down, see how that, that, that snap? That's pushing the wire into place and cutting off the ends at the exact same time. See? So now I have a nice, neat uh, cable at the end of the wire. So, so this is beforehand, this is afterhand. And so you just... And there you go. Now, now your cable is terminated into a jack and it's... it's it's that easy. <laughs> um, now, in order to test this, if, if you were going to test this, you go back and you use your, your cable tester. Now, there's always on the cable testers, there's the main part and then what's called the remote. Now, what you do 
is you, um, on one side, you take your jack, and then you take a little patch cable, and you plug the patch cable into the jack, and then you plug that patch cable into this remote device. And then on the other side, you plug a patch cable into the jack on the other side, and then plug that patch cable into this testing device, and then you test and see if everything's okay. If everything's okay, it will pass just like you passed for the patch cable. If there's a problem, well, it'll, it'll show you that there's a failure, like this is saying open. Um, and then, then you can you can figure that out. So that that's that's all there is to uh, to terminating a, uh, a cable into this little plug. Now the last tool, uh, you know, after you punch down the cable into to the nice little jack, and you're thinking, okay, I want to test this cable, um, but I don't, I don't know where the end of this cable is. This 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 cable, you know, it comes out of the wall, but but. But then where, where, where does it go? That's why you now use a toning device. So again, with this toning device, you plug the, the main unit in, into, into the plug. And you turn, turn this main unit on. This, this sends a tone down the wire. You then use your fancy little wand and the wand creates a noise when it hears the signal down the wire, like this. See, so if I go this way, you don't hear anything. If I'm by the wire, you hear something. So we've gone over how to create a patch cable and then how to, to punch down a network cable into a jack. So really, the, the only thing left is how to get a cable, you know, from point A to point B in the building. So if you have a server all the way in the, the back of the building, how do you, how do you connect the, the computers up front uh, to it? Well, realistically, a lot of this depends on the type of building you have. Uh, really, all you do, all you do when you run cable is you literally just run the cable from point A to point B. So you go from the patch panel where your server is and you run a cable all the way up to where your computers are up front. If you're lucky enough to be in new construction, uh, you have things like drop ceilings and cable is incredibly easy to run uh, in new construction because the, the drop ceilings, you just open up a little panel uh, in the ceiling, you can, you can run the cable really easily. When you get to the, the, to the wall that you want to put the jack on, um, you can just run the cable through the wall very easily, open up a little hole, and you're done. Um, simple. If you're in some place like Baltimore, if you're in an old city, running cable can be a real pain in the butt um, because we don't have things like drop ceilings. Um, my, my walls are plaster. Um, there's plaster and then there's brick, and then there's nothing else. So when you run wiring in old buildings, a lot of times you have to use something like conduit. So you actually have to secure a conduit to the wall, and then you put the cable inside the conduit, like so, and then you, you, know, you paint over the, the conduit or such. Realistically though, all you have to worry about is, is that you don't do anything stupid to the cable. You can run, generally, a cable for 300 meters or 330 feet, and it will still be good for network communications. So that's approximately uh, the farthest distance uh, you can run a cable. If you run it uh, further than uh, 100 meters or 330 feet, the signal quality may degrade to the point that computers cannot use the signal. So when you, when you run the cable, uh, make sure um, that it's, that's not over 100 meters or 330 feet. The next thing is when you run the cable, especially on very long runs, you have to make sure that nothing happens to this cable. If this cable gets crimped like this, or something gets cut in the process of running this cable, this cable may become utterly worthless. So again, in some place like Baltimore, I have run you know, 90 meter runs uh, you know, through brick walls, through cement walls, over ceilings, through ductwork, etc. 
And if at any time while I was while I was running that cable, something had gotten crinked or caught or or whatever, that entire run could have become worthless. So when you are running the cable, be very 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 careful because again, like I say, any kinks, any twists, any problems with this cable, um, and the cable itself might become absolutely worthless. So. When you're running the cable, uh, I have a couple of tools that, that, that make life a lot easier for you. Now, when you're trying to fish uh, the, the network cable through walls or through conduits, something that is very useful is this. It's called fish tape. Uh, this fish tape is actually a 75-foot fish tape. With this, this is a very stiff wire, and so you can... You can run this up through walls or through conduits to the place you want to pull the wire through. So let's say you're, you're at the bottom, you're at the bottom of a, of a wall where you, where you want the cable to come and, uh, and the wires come through the ceiling. You can push this up through the wall, tape the cable to the top of this, and then very easily pull that cable down to where you want it to go. Um, like I say, this is great. A lot of a uh, lot of professional buildings will have conduit already built into their walls, and so you can run this 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 fish tape all the way through the conduit, grab the cable uh, that you want to run, and then just just pull pull it along. Um, I've actually used this on, on fifty foot conduits, and it, it makes life really easy. So this is fish tape. The next thing. That's very useful. Uh, these are useful for um, the, those drop ceilings we were talking about. When you have when you have a large area that's that's it's only covered with uh, with drop ceilings, so you can run cable over the drop ceilings very easily. This is these are called fish sticks. And these fish sticks they come in sets of three generally. I lost one of mine, but they're three feet fiberglass uh, poles. Now what you do is you tape your cable to one end of uh, one of these poles, and then you can screw these poles together like so. So you, you tape to one side, then you screw these poles together, and then you push this through the drop ceiling, and this creates a nine foot uh, um, little pole that, or stick that you can pull. So you put this up into the drop ceiling, and then you can even throw this a little distance. And so you can very easily, um, if, you, if you have like two people, you can have one person sitting down like 15 feet from where you are uh, on the drop ceiling. You can secure your little cable to this fish stick, you put this through the drop ceiling, you throw it over to them, they grab it, you go down 15 feet, and so on and so forth. Um, you can, you can do a lot of cabling very quickly with drop ceiling and fish sticks. That's, that's what the, the fish sticks are used for. The last tool that you should have in your kit is this. This is called a drywall saw. What this, is, what this is good for is when you're putting the jacks into the wall. So you've, where is it? So you, you've punched down your little jack and you want to put it into a nice little wall plate like this. But you need to put a little hole in the drywall for your wall plate. Well, a drywall saw, all you do is you figure out um, where on the wall you want the wall plate to go. You literally put the sharp end straight into the drywall. You take your hand, you hit it hard. This will cut into the drywall and then you can just very easily cut your little hole out of the drywall and put your wall plate in. Um, this makes life a lot easier. I've seen people try to use like X-Acto knives and all kinds of weird stuff to, to cut holes in drywall. If you have this little $10 drywall saw, you can, you can cut your little holes in drywall in, I don't know, in 30 seconds. It's very easy to do. So just remember, uh, when you're running your cables, uh, they can't be over 100 meters or 330 feet in length. Uh, you may go a little further, <laughs> but the signal degradation, the, 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 the network signal falls off after 100 meters. So if, if you run a cable that's longer than 100 meters, your, your computers might not be able to talk over it. When you are running the cable, 
make sure you don't put any little kinks or, or bends or, or any little cuts or any of that stuff into the cable. Be very careful when you're running this cable um, because if, if, if you do kink it, crimp it, cut it uh, while you're running it, well, then it's worthless and you just wasted the time. You're going to have to redo the run. When you're trying to fish wire through walls, using fish tape is very, very useful. Uh, I think a fish tape normally costs anywhere between $20 to $30. When you're fishing um, cable over through uh, drop ceiling, fish sticks are absolutely amazing. Again, they, they cost you about $20 for a set. And then when you're dealing with drywall, make sure to get a drywall uh, saw. This, this, this is just wonderful. So, so, so that's a uh, little bit about running cable. That's really about all there is to, to, to network cabling. Uh, like I said in the beginning, this is pretty easy stuff. A lot of people get scared, a lot of people get worried. Oh no, I can't do it. Yeah, literally, I, I taught myself how to, how to do this in a night. And, and when, I, when I say I taught myself how to do this in a night, I taught myself how to do this in a night and literally the next day I was in a commercial property actually doing this. It is that easy to do. And like I say, is if, if you're a consultant or a contractor, Man, this stuff is easy money. Uh, generally, when everything's said and done, you're looking at $150 uh, per run you get paid. So, um, so that, that's, that's, that's nice profit. I mean, you take out some for cable, you take out some for plugs and expenses, and I mean, you're, you're walking out with about $120 in labor fees for, uh, for, for running cable. And I just taught you almost everything you need to know to, to run cable. A couple of things uh, to talk about before we wrap this up is the first thing with cabling is again, uh, cabling is very easy to do and as long as you follow the steps and you do everything right, uh, life is yippee skippy, life is, life is great. If you don't pay attention to what you're doing, um, if, if you try to rush the process, th then you can make your life a living hell. Like I say. All these little wires, they have to be in the proper place when you, when you crimp down and create the patch cables. You have to, to punch down the cables to the right places on the jacks. When you run the cable, you have to be very slow with how you do it to make sure that there aren't any kinks or crimps or any of that. Because if you do any of these things, then all, all of the work is, is worthless. You, you have to redo everything that you just did. The other thing is that neatness uh, with wiring and with cabling really counts. Uh, a lot of people try to rush through this process and they, they leave a mess behind. Use things like zip ties, um, you know, cable wires and such, and make sure all your cabling looks nice and neat. It's, it's orderly that when a technician comes in behind you that they will understand where all the cabling goes to. Um, I've seen a lot of people run cables, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll run a hundred different cables, but then they won't mark it properly, or it'll just be a mess, and when a technician, when a network engineer comes in, they, they won't know what cable goes to what, what it's doing, etc. So, when you're running the cables, just be very, very neat. Like I say, use zip ties to zip tie all the cables together, make sure that the cables are even and nice and pretty, and if you do that, uh, life will be good for you. One of the big uh, things uh, with cabling um, is that when you're dealing with a building, uh, you know, you're dealing with a small office or, or even a larger office, all of your cables should go back to one place, generally. Uh, we will have an infrastructure class where uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about other things. I'll talk about intermediate distribution facilities and such. But for now, if you're dealing with small buildings or small offices, all the cables in the building, in the office, should go back to one place. It should go back to one server room. You don't want five cables going here, five cables going here, five cables going here, and then there's a switch in the middle, and they all somehow connect together. All the cables in the building, when you're cabling the building, should go back to one central area. And when they go back to that one central area, they should all be punched down into a patch panel. So all a patch panel is, is it is a panel with a, with a whole bunch of plugs on it. So anywhere between 12 to 120 plugs, I mean, lots of them. 
And so all the cables go back and they should all get punched down into one big patch panel. And that patch panel should be marked with, you know, what cable goes to what. A lot of people try to save money. So they run all the cables maybe back to one area and then they punch or they, they just uh, terminate the, the cables into plugs. They, they, don't, they don't put the cables into a patch panel. Or they, they put all the cables into a bunch of these, these plugs instead of a patch panel. Remember, there are going to be computer technicians coming in behind you. Patch panels are very easy to look at, and when you look at them, it's very easy to understand what's going on. You can go, okay, here's a patch panel. This, this, this port here goes to this plug up there. I understand what's going on. If you walk into a room and, and you just have 30 of these staring at you, or 50 of you know, little wires coming down with these, it gets very confusing. And again, in the computer business, in the technology business, the most expensive thing is labor. So if I walk onto a client's site and it takes me an hour to figure out what all these wires mean, well, I'm going to bill the client for an hour for me figuring out what all the wires mean, and then I'll get down to fixing the problem. So if all the wires go into a nice, neat patch panel that I can walk in, I can, I can easily understand what's going on, that is cheaper for the client and, and it makes everybody happier. The one thing too with, with the neatness and with the, uh, with the patch panel is all these cables that, that come in from all the building, they should all be home runs. Uh, what home runs mean is that the cable should be a single cable that goes from wherever the computer is or from the jack that the computer plugs into all the way down to the patch panel. A lot of people, you know, they'll have extra cable around. So they'll do, let's say, a 20 foot section of cable. Then they'll put that cable into a jack and then they'll, they'll, they'll basically, they'll connect, they'll, they'll splice the network cable in the middle. You don't, you don't want to do that professionally. There are a lot of problems that can happen in human environments. Uh, there, there may be deterioration uh, that will kill that, that cable uh, quicker than normal. There may be some kind of stress that, that, that pulls the, the connection apart so the network cable doesn't work properly. When you are running the cables, you, you, you want a home run. The, the, the cable from, from the little port by the computer should be one single cable that goes all the way down to the patch panel in the basement or in, in the server room. Um, it, it, it makes life a, a lot easier because it, there, there can be a lot of problems. Like I say, is if you try to splice the cables in the middle, there could be humidity, uh, deterioration problems, there could be pressure, there could be something that causes that cable to fail and that's, that's what nobody wants. So, uh, so this was a class uh, on, on network cabling. Uh, again, we went over patch cables, we went over um, how, to, how to punch down uh, cables into plugs. Uh, we talked about Cat3 cable, Cat5 cable, Cat6 cable. Again, do not use Cat3 cable, it exists, but don't ever use it. Cat5e cable is what you'll normally buy at Home Depot and such. It costs you about $50 for a 500 foot box of it or um, $90 for a 1,000 foot box of it. There is something called plenum cable. Remember, plenum is a lot more expensive than normal cable and all it is used for is to run through air ducting. So if you don't need to run cables through air ducting, don't buy it. And if you have to run cables through air ducting, try to bypass it because it really is expensive. It's like five times as expensive as, as a normal box of cable. Uh, we talked about uh, the types of jacks. So remember, network cables use RJ45 jacks. Telephone cables use RJ11. So don't, don't, don't buy RJ11, buy RJ45 uh, jacks and plugs. Uh, the tools we talked about, make sure you always buy good quality tools, don't buy the cheap crap. Uh, get a pair of good electrician scissors, get a pair of crimpers, uh, get your punch down tool with the 110 blade, uh, not the 66 blade. You can get the 66 blade in addition to the 110 blade, but for networking you need the 110 blade. Um, Get the cable tester because you need to, 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 to test the cables and then get that toner like I showed you. You can use that toner to, to be able to, to trace cables.
Again, uh, making patch cables, I showed you how to do it, really simple. And punching down cables into jacks, uh, again, is very simple. There are two standards for putting the wires into either the, the jack or the plug. Uh, there is A or there is B. Technically, it doesn't matter which one you use, but when you're doing wiring, you can only do one or the other. You can't, one side cannot be A and the other side be B. That doesn't work. In the United States, for whatever reason, B is considered the standard. So if you're in the United States, use B. If you're somewhere else, do whatever it is you guys do. Um, again, cable runs can be up to uh, 100 meters or 330 feet. Uh, don't make them any longer. When you're, when you're running the cable, make sure there's no any crinks, crimples, cuts, any of that, because that, that'll just ruin everything. Uh, Fish tape is used to, to run cables through walls. Uh, fish sticks are used to run cables uh, in drop ceiling. Uh, neatness counts. Always make sure to use a patch panel. Uh, or try to use a patch panel. I don't know. They, they cost anywhere between $50 to $150. It really is. It, it's worth the money at the end of the day. And then when you are wiring a building, if you're wiring a building, all of the cables should be home runs. So. It should be a single cable that runs all the way from the plug in the wall all the way back uh, to, the, to the patch panel. The last final bit of advice is if you're running a lot of cables from one room, um, let's say all the way back to that little server room or patch panel, you can run the cables together. So like when I'm running cables, I'll bundle eight cables. I'll tape like eight cables together and tape all of that to the fish stick and run all eight cables at one time. So think about that, is if you're wiring a building, buy a few boxes of network cable, and then you can pull multiple cables at the same time. So, uh, so like if, if I'm running cables to a room, I will tape all the wires that I'm running to that room together. I'll pull them to one central area, and then I'll break off uh, whatever cables I need to run to the different parts of the room. So I'll run all eight cables, let's say, together to the beginning of the room. Then I'll pull two cables off to go to the plugs that go on this side of the room. I'll pull two cables off to go to the plugs that go on this side of the room and go pull two cables off to go to the plugs on this side of the room. So you can plug multiple rooms. Uh, you, you can pull uh, multiple cables to, to, to a single room. That will save you a lot of time. So. Uh, well, I hope you learned something in this class. This, this was uh, Network Cabling. I'm Eli the Computer Guy, and I look forward to seeing you at the next class.